Hey everyone, I'm Matt Dolan with Dolan Divorce Lawyers in Connecticut. And today what I'm going to talk about is how to file an emergency custody application here in Connecticut. So I'm going to share my screen and first show you the relevant statute, which is uh, Connecticut General Statute Section 46B-56F. 66 The caption is Emergency Ex Parte Order of Custody. So what that says is any person seeking custody of a minor child pursuant to you know, a couple of different sections of the statutes, we don't need to get into those in detail, but basically if you have a parental right, so if you're a parent or you have legal guardianship over a child, this section <coughs> applies to you. If you're like an aunt or uncle or some other relative without that parental right, you can't file an emergency custody application. There's other channels. You might be able to report a situation to the Department of Children and Families, but this section does not apply to you. So if you do have that parental right, you can make an application to the Superior Court for an emergency ex parte order of custody when you believe that an immediate and present risk of physical danger or psychological harm to the child exists. So that's the standard that the court applies. There has to be an immediate and present risk of physical danger or psychological harm to the child. So it goes on to say that the court shall order a hearing. So if you file an application, the court will order a hearing on that application. And if prior to or after such hearing, the court finds that immediate and present risk of physical danger or psychological harm to the child exists, the court may in its discretion issue an emergency order. So it can issue that emergency order either prior to a hearing, so right after the application is submitted, or they can issue the order after the hearing takes place. So I'm gonna show you the forms. Um, I'm not gonna put these forms on our website just because, you know, for you to download from our website because they're periodically updated by the court. So you're better off just doing a Google search for like the form number here. So the uh, the ex parte application form is JDFM222. So do a Google search for that. You should be able to find it. So at the top, you just put you know basic case information. If you don't have a if you don't have a case yet, you will not have a docket number. So when you file an emergency um, custody application, if you do not have any pending case in the court, you have to, with the application, you have to file a custody application. So you have to initiate a custody proceeding or a divorce proceeding or, you know, legal separation or annulment. Those are pretty rare. So you have to, if you're not married, or you can still do only custody application if you are married because you don't want to necessarily file for divorce. So there has to be a pending custody application or a pending divorce. So you will have to file those, or if there already is a pending custody application, um, you know, may maybe you got divorced two years ago or something. Um, if there's already a pending case that has gone to judgment, so it was finalized in the past, then you don't, or what you will have to do is file a motion to modify the existing orders. You will have to file that motion to modify along with the custody application in order to kind of reopen the case. And if there if the case is already open, you know, there's something going on, there's already a pending divorce, for example, or there's already a pending to motion motion to modify, or there's already a pending custody application, then you don't have to file any motion. But they'll be able to tell you at the clerk's office when you file this whether or not you have to file anything else with it. So again, it's just the basic information at the top. You put your name and whether you're a parent or legal guardian, you put the name of any children, the name of the person you're filing it against. Um, here's where you have to indicate that you are filing or there is already a pending matter in which you're a party to a you know, divorce annulment, post-judgment motion uh, to modify legal separation or a custody application already pending. And then you have to indicate that you believe, well, you don't have to do anything. This is just part of the form that you believe there's an immediate and present risk of physical danger or psychological harm to the child or children. And that's, again, the standard that the court will use. 
and then you indicate the relief that you're seeking. So you might want temporary legal and physical custody to you presumably put in your own name here so that you want to have um, custody in in your you want to have custody. And then you know you might want certain visitation. So you might want supervised visitation only. So you you put the specific access you want the other party to have. Or if you don't want them to have any visitation, you just put no visitation. Um, if you don't want them to be able to remove the child from the state of Connecticut, you check off that box. Um, you know, you don't want them to interfere with your custody of the child or children. Presumably that will be the case. So you'll check off that box. And you don't want them to interfere with the educational program of the child or children. So you will check that box off. And then, you know, you may be any other relief you're seeking, you know, if you want to expand upon it, maybe you don't want a certain third party to be around the child, children, you know, you might put that in the other category, there can be, you know, any number of things that you put here. And then below that, you put an explanation for why you believe there's an immediate and present risk of physical danger or psychological harm to the child or children. So you put, you know, the narrative of what's going on here. If you run out of space, you can add a second page. So that's where you have the opportunity to tell your story of what's going on. Um, you let the court know whether or not you have told the other party that you are filing the application. Um, and then let's see. Oh no, sorry, that's in this section. Uh, oh, you, here is where you say whether or not you've been a party or a witness or participated in any other capacity in any other proceeding in Connecticut or in any other state concerning custody or visitation. So if there's been any other pending cases uh, that involve custody in Connecticut or anywhere else, you make sure you include those. Um, this is whether or not you have uh, you know, notified the other person that you are filing the emergency application. So that's the basics of the application. Below that, the third page is what the court will fill out after you submit this to the court. And then with the uh, emergency custody application, you also have to fill out an affidavit concerning children which I'm not going to go over in detail. It's just, you know, you provide basic information on where you've lived for the past five years or where the child has lived and whether there's any other pending cases, et cetera. So those are the basics of what you file with the custody application. So again, you submit this to the court and the court will either grant it or deny it. That Well, they can do a, a couple of different things. They can grant emergency relief based on the application. If they grant that relief, then they have to then schedule a hearing within the next 14 days. If they deny if they deny the relief that you're requesting, they still have to schedule a hearing. It just does not necessarily need to be within the next 14 days. Now, hopefully if it's like a pretty urgent situation, they will file it relatively quickly. Oftentimes the court will schedule the hearing for the next to take place within the next 14 days, but they don't necessarily have to. So you get that application filed. The, the judge will rule on it the same day. You, you know, grant it, deny it, schedule it for a hearing. Once you receive that back, you then have to serve the other party. You have to provide them with notice of the application and the hearing. So you have to get a marshal and arrange for them to be served and you have to make sure that you serve them at least five days in advance of the hearing so that they have an opportunity to go to court. And then once you're in court, you'll generally first meet with family relations. So that's kind of a neutral party who will try to help you and the opposing party reach an agreement and try to work out whatever the disputed issue is. Um, obviously, if you can work out an agreement, that's always ideal. And that gets that agreement gets submitted to the court, and that becomes a court order. If you can't reach an agreement with family relations, you would have that meeting with family relations, and then afterwards, if there's no agreement, you would go in front of a judge, and that's where you have an opportunity to, you know, plead your case and and tell the court why you want the emergency 
relief that you're seeking to be granted. The other side will have the opportunity to put on their case and say why they don't think it should be granted. And then ultimately the judge will make a decision as to whether or not to grant the emergency relief that you're seeking in your application. So those are the basics on how to file an emergency custody application. As usual, if you have any other questions, you can feel free to give our office a call at any time.